Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, to start the year, we have a couple of cleanup items here from last year. First of all, Brad published an end of year traffic analysis quiz. So if you are into pack analysis, if you like your Wireshark, then uh, take a look at the traffic he has. And of course, uh, he'll at some point then also publish a solution. And on December 23rd, which is probably why I missed it, uh, Niels uh, Tusink from Dutch uh, security company iControl did publish an advisory about a backdoor in various products made by Cycell. Now, Cycell is uh, pretty famous for sort of DSL modems and such, but uh, they also make uh, VPNs and uh, their Psywall, that's also uh, quite common. Uh, USG Flex is another product that is affected by this. And essentially, it's your good old username and pa- password that's hard-coded in the firmware and cannot be updated by the user. This can be exploited via SSH and via the web interface, also as uh, VPN credentials, which tends to listen on port 443 on these devices. A firmware update has been released by Cycell, but doesn't look like it's available yet for all devices. Now, I'm not terribly familiar with Cycell, but they're saying for their AP controllers, the patch will be coming in April. Now, sadly, uh, one uh, publication that reported about this issue did also publish uh, the full password. The original advisory by Niels did not include the entire password, just sort of a masked version of it. I just checked our SSH honeypot logs. I'm not seeing any attempts with this username and password combination yet. But then again, it's also pretty easy to fingerprint these devices. So maybe that the attackers haven't really sort of done the white internet scans that we often see with these default passwords. So if you are running an affected device, this is something that you want to patch uh, today, or at the very least, if you can't find a patch for your particular device, block access from the internet to SSH and the web interface. And solar winds still stayed sort of at the top of the news over the holidays. And now nothing really actionable in terms of new uh, things that you should look for or such. But Microsoft now announced that it actually was uh, breached and that uh, its source code uh, was accessed as a result of uh, the solar winds uh, breach. So what this really comes down to is that an attack against one major supplier like SolarWinds then easily can cascade into other suppliers as well. And you definitely should be careful and should probably always have been careful about software that you purchase, that you're introducing in your environment, that it may have some additional goodies attached to it. And in the past, we often talked about this when we talked about open source libraries and such. But of course, uh, those are the cases that are more obvious uh, by being open source. Commercial software definitely isn't immune against uh, these kind of backdoors and add-ons. And well, uh, then I want to start up uh, something again that I uh, did sort of in the beginning of last year, and that's the good old game. If you find any errors in the podcast or anything uh, really on the Internet Storm Center side, uh, send me an email and uh, you will be entered in a drawing for a Raspberry Pi, and uh, that will be given away sort of one Raspberry Pi each month. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.